What's going on hybrid shooters? It's Jason and welcome to possibly the start of a new series called FAQ Fridays where I answer frequently asked questions. I'm planning to do these videos bi-weekly so yeah every other week. And the reason why I'm doing this is because it's been getting incredibly hard nowadays to answer each individual questions that come in through my social media. So instead of blazing through the questions via text, I figured I can put together a video where it not only benefits the person who ask it, but also the people who watch my YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the first question. All right, so question number one, should I wait for the next A7 camera or should I just buy the A7R2? So just because the timing of this video and with NAB 2017 just around the corner, I would say just wait because in the event that the new camera does come out, the prices on these current A7 would drop anyways. So if you're looking to get a brand new new camera, it's probably coming out. But just keep in mind that it won't be for like another couple of months after the announcement that the camera gets released and you have to be quick with your pre-orders too because new Sony commodities are super hot once they come out so if you missed your pre-order you might have to, you might have to wait like an extra couple of months but because the new camera will drop the current prices on the camera the current prices on the a7r or the a7s will drop so i would say hold off and wait until april 23rd and see what happens uh, question number two, should I get the A7 II or get the A6500? I want to go full frame. So I'm going to be honest with you guys, I, my Sony history is fairly recent. Like I hopped on the Sony train when the A7R2 and the A7S II came out. So any cameras prior to that, I have no experience with. So with that said, I can highly recommend the A6500. It's a camera that I'm using right now to record. Um, I've been using that camera day in and day out and it's a pretty dang cool, pretty dang good video and photo camera. Uh, if you want to go full frame, I can definitely sympathize. I used to shoot on a T3i and when I moved on to a 5D Mark III or a Canon 6D, it was a world of a difference. So I'd say if you want to go full frame, I would recommend going with the A7R2, but if your budget does not allow for it, then yeah, give the A7 II a try. Number three, another A or B question, GH5 or A6500. They're both great systems. You can't go wrong with either. But if you want overall reliability, I say go with the GH5. It has better battery life, rock steady, in-body image stabilization, and less rolling shutter. Go with the A6500 if you want a more reliable autofocus, better stills capabilities, and um, better IS, high ISO performance. Question number four, is it okay to use full frame lenses on the A6500? I heard it's not as sharp. So that is a very touchy subject. Tony Northrup did an extensive presentation on it, but here's my take on it. If you don't understand the science behind it, don't even worry about it. The only thing I care about when I mount a full frame lens on an APS-C body is the crop factor, what I need to multiply for my focal length. Um, I actually use that to my advantage. If I know I need to get a far distance shot, like I would mount uh, a full frame lens, like 70 to 200 on my 6500 and, and I know I get like a 300 millimeter equivalent. So I actually use that to my advantage. But if I start thinking about multiplying the aperture by 1.5 times and just like, oh, you know, 2.8 on an APS-C camera is not really 2.8, it's like 5.0 or something like that's That's just too much. That's just, don't even worry about that. You know, the more you worry about that, it's it to me it just seems silly so so with that said i do use full frame lenses on my a6500 all the time i'm using the 55 millimeter right now on this and if anything it, it's much sharper than if i were to use it on my a7r2 because what the 6500 does is it shoots in 6k in a 4k composition so you actually get a lot more details retained i've never had issues shooting photos with this setup either so so yeah i would say don't worry about these minor technical stuff and just go out and shoot so before I move on, I want to give myself a quick plug. I don't know if some of you guys know this, but I did quit my full-time job two months ago. I was planning to do uh, freelance filmmaking and photography, but within the last couple of weeks, I just decided to do YouTube full-time. And if this Q&A or any of my videos has helped you out in any way, I would really appreciate it if you guys can buy something with my general Amazon affiliate link down below. Just punch in whatever on Amazon that you want to buy and just check out with it. And I 
get a small commission from that. It costs you nothing extra. If you guys don't want to do that, you guys can also donate directly to me either through my YouTube channel or PayPal. Uh, the links are in the description box below. Again, you guys don't have to because the next best thing you can do for me is give this video or any of my video a thumbs up and leave in the comments down below because those are the two things that continues to motivate me to keep making awesome content such as this one. And if you find the information helpful and useful, share it on Facebook group or something. Share it with somebody who's using a Sony camera. I always get super, super happy when I come across a question on Facebook and I, 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 I'm about to answer it and then all of a sudden I see somebody linking my video as a response to this person. They're like, hey, that's a great video. Thanks so much for sharing. It makes me happy, you know, that's awesome. I would greatly appreciate any support that you guys can give me. My, my video's already played out. It's, back, it's just back to the Google Cast screen now, whatever. Uh, which adapter should I buy? I think I'm question number five now. Which adapter should I buy? Metabones or Sigma MC11 adapter? So in terms of just photos, if you want a pretty decent autofocus and you have a bunch of Canon EF slash EFS lenses, go with the Metabones uh, Mark IV adapter. If you have a bunch of Sigma lenses, go with the Sigma MC11 adapter and make sure to check the compatibility list on Sigma website and see if your Sigma lenses would work on that adapter. Um, for the most part, all the new lenses that are coming out by Sigma and all the art series lenses should work really well. Um, the difference between the Metabones and the Sigma MC11 adapter is if you use Sigma lens on the Sigma MC11 adapter, you get to take advantage of all of Sony's great autofocusing features like the IAF and the tracking AF, whereas the Metabones would not do that for your camera. And if you do videos, um, both of these lenses don't really have reliable autofocus in video mode. Uh, the Sigma MC11 adapter kind of does, but your lens make noises when it tries to autofocus. So that's not very ideal if you're trying to capture sound. But if you're making a film, you're using manual lenses, I think any adapters would work just fine. It's rather, I would actually recommend this adapter, the Photodiox ND adapt. I don't know the actual thing. I'm, I'm gonna flash it on the screen right now. Get this one. This one has a built-in ND filter on it. I think Cheesy Cam and Matt Johnson really recommended this one, so give that one a shot. Question number six. What about the Viltrox adapter slash can you recommend a Nikon adapter? Sorry, I don't have any experiences with those, so I can't recommend them. Question number seven. What picture profiles do you use? Um, so this is a question that I always get in my videos. Here's the two that I use most often. Autumn leaves and picture profile one. So Autumn Leaves is not a picture profile, it's actually a creative style. And um, the settings that I have it on is negative three contrast and negative three sharpness or negative three saturation. I, I forgot which one it is, but I'll have more information in the, in the bottom of the screen. But it's negative three, zero negative three for Autumn Leaves. It works well outdoors. I really like it a lot. It gives that, it gives that really punchy contrast look that, you, that looks great straight out of the camera. But sometimes when I'm shooting indoor, I find that to be a little too contrasty for my taste. So I would switch to PP1. It's uh, in their default settings. I think it uses uh, the color to use as movie or something. It works great. I like it a lot. I'm shooting with PP1. Actually, no, I'm shooting with S-Log2 right now. <laughs> okay, so the, 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 the other picture profile I use is S-Log2. And I've been using it a lot lately with my Atomos Ninja Flame. I have it mounted right here. It's great. I get to nail my exposure just right for S-Log2. So that's another picture profile I've been using as of late. But for the most part, um, even in professional work, I use Autumn Leaves and Picture Profile 1. They work great for me. All right, question number eight. Should I get the 55 millimeter or the 85 millimeter for portraits? I'm using the A6500. So when you mount the 55 on a crop body, it effectively becomes somewhere around 85 millimeter. So just because you have that 85 millimeter focal length, you're working with that, doesn't mean you get that same compression as you would from an 85 millimeter lens. So if you want that same compression look that an actual 85 millimeter lens that uh, gives you, get the 85 millimeter. Um, but when you put that on a crop body, it becomes like 127, 130 or something like that. So I'd say if you have the space, if you find yourself working with a lot of space that you can back up and get the shot, I would say go with the 85. But if not, you're working in very limited space, go with the 55. 
Question number nine. What was the Octobox and the LiPo you used in your 85 millimeter WonderCon video? So the Octobox I was using was the Parapop Glow 38 inch Octobox. Um, you can pick that up on Adorama, but I think it's currently sold out right now. Um, but yeah, I'll have a link in the description box below so you can check up on it when it comes back on stock. Uh, and the light pole, it actually is not mine, it's, it belongs to Mark, but I think he uses the Photoflex Light Reach Pole, and um, I think that's also sold out on Amazon. But b and might have one. Uh, I'll, again, I'll have a link below. You guys can click and check it out. All right, question number 10, and I think a lot of people are asking this right now. Where did I get this Sony Alpha t-shirt? Um, I got this at my local camera store when Sony was having an event there. I befriended one of the Sony reps and he was like, hey, do you want a free Sony Alpha t-shirt? And I was like, heck yeah, I do. Sony has been doing a lot of promotion at events at like camera stores across the nation. So um, they're putting together like workshops with Sony artisans. They're also offering free sensor cleaning and camera lens cleaning, um, giving out free swags like this. This is a microfiber pouch thing. Also, I got like a Sony Alpha hat laying somewhere around, I don't even know where it went. But yeah, they're giving out free swags there. Um, so you guys should definitely hit up a Sony event whenever they're throwing something at your local camera shop. Even if you don't wanna go for the workshop, it's well worth it to get your camera and lenses clean. Back before I had pro support, I would just like lug a bunch of my gear and be like, here you go, please take care of my stuff for me. Thank you so much. So they've been awesome with it. Uh, and I would highly, highly recommend just going to one of those events because free swags and free sensor cleaning, why not? All right, guys, thanks for watching. This FAQ video was a lot of fun to make. Again, if you want to support the channel, all the links are down below. And go ahead and leave me questions for the next FAQ video that you want answered. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.